welcome. This is the second video on juxtaposition, and we're going to be looking at some more non-traditional examples. Uh, I'm Mr. Clark. I'm Mr. Lehman. I'm Ms. Cabico. So here's the first piece that we're looking at here. This piece is by a pop artist named James Rosenquist. It is a, a doll, and also juxtaposing that with the plastic that is covering up the doll. Uh, this is actually a very large painting, about eight feet square, I think, in, in real life. I guess the real question is, is that if he's showing us this doll that we're used to seeing, is that he's presenting it to us in a way that we're not used to seeing it by covering it with plastic. And so the question is, why? It's interesting to consider scale as you talk about the actual size of this painting. As I look at it at this scale, it seemed very normal to view a child's toy of this sort wrapped in plastic as if it were still sitting on the shelf. But considering the fact that it's eight foot square, I now can't help but feel very differently about it. Well, I mean, I think that's an interesting point, though, is that a lot of pop artists presented things very largely. Uh, I can recall being in high school not really liking Andy Warhol, and then I saw a piece of his in person, and then all of a sudden it was a 20 foot long painting, and the ability that scale can really have to capture uh, your attention, but really say something prolific, I think is, uh, Rosenquist is an interesting guy because uh, he presents usually some pretty complex symbolism in a lot of his pieces, and it combines a lot of different things, and here he's just taking two things very specifically. Are we viewing this as a consumerism good, or are we viewing the doll here with uh, human traits and being covered up by plastic? And so what is the plastic representing here? Uh, this piece is 1839 by J.M.W. Turner. It is a new tugboat steam-powered ship it is representing something that is new and industrial, and it is towing off this old clipper ship that's been around for who knows how many years and it is taking it to be destroyed. Turner here is juxtaposing essentially the new taking away the old. Uh, new and old. It's interesting to consider the handling of the brushwork in a painting like this and knowing that Turner was doing something so very different from his contemporaries. Is that it's sort of dealing with the, the changing of the guard, the comparing the old and new. And Turner was a great bridge of himself as an artist. He was looking forward. And so I think this piece is almost sort of autobiographical in that sense, is that he himself felt like he was a bridge of old traditional material and also uh, making new headway in the realm of art. So with all the old and new conversations, are we looking at a sunrise or a sunset? Great question. This is the last one. This is by Klaus Oldenburg. This is called Spoonbridge and Cherry, made in 1988. And I believe this is outside of the Walker Museum of Art in Minneapolis. Why I'm considering this to be a non-traditional example of juxtaposition is because he's juxtaposing the spoon with the environment. And so he's very much changing the context and we're used to seeing the spoon of a cherry is that we're used to seeing it in the kitchen at a small scale. Uh, and we're also used to using it as a tool for scooping food like a cherry. And here it's at a much larger scale. It's being placed outside and it's also functionally different. This is called a spoon bridge. So he's turned the function of the spoon into an actual bridge. And so he's changed the way we view this in a lot of ways. Here's an example where the environment around the sculpture gives you, clues you into as to the, the scale of it for a viewing audience like this where we're looking at it not on site. You can't help but be impacted by that size differentiation. A lot of Oldenburg's work looks at traditional public sculpture and really questions what it should be. Uh, we look at public sculpture, say, in a historical context, we want to see a general on horseback and these very epic <laughs> things, very large scale. And here he's taking, like a lot of sort of pop artists do, taking these everyday items, really changing the scale and making us think differently about these things that we've seen every day our, our entire lives. Sure. What is art? Would it be art if it were bigger? Would it be art <laughs> if it were <clears throat> a bridge? 
Yes. Context is something that he has played with his entire career. And the drawings that he has uh, for proposed sculptures or the other pieces that he has, it's all using everyday sort of items. It's all on an extremely large scale. And I think it, it asks the viewer to a lot of questions. It makes me want to be playful. So like I feel like that's mm -hmm. a lot of, yeah. of what he's he's trying to get at. So, you know, like you said, it changes the functionality to something that is now playful. Juxtaposing it where it is in a lake, where, like, around a field where you can play, I think it's just supposed to make you stop and think. And the scale makes you stop and think, because you have to notice it. To me, it's just, like, meant to, like, hey, you should, you should stop and you should enjoy, or you should find things that make you happy. We looked at Turner for an example, who I love, but, wow, he's serious. He's, his work is so serious. And I think it's important for us to look at uh, artwork that is a little bit refreshing, that doesn't mm -hmm. take itself super seriously, and we can still view it seriously, though, is that this is a serious piece of artwork. It has the depth and meaning that we're seeing in those other pieces that are so serious, but art doesn't need to be so serious all the time. Yeah, something that's happiness and fun doesn't lose its ability to be deep and complex. But um, how do you get across the other side of the spoon? Like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> I, like, where, like, do you have, like, once you hit the, the disc part, how, right. how do you get off of it? It's not um, really a bridge. Oh, it's not? Yeah. I don't think it's functional they, uh, that they don't want people climbing fact, all over it. In fact, I was it. guessing that those little white signs there probably so say, you're keep not, off the spoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, it's funny, if you go to... I know, I know, I want to climb. If you go to... So that's what it's making us want to do. Well, right, you said it would make you happy. I would be yeah. very happy to be able to yeah. walk out on that spoon. You could probably jump Slide off of it into the, into the river or the lake. That's right.